Good morning, all you beautiful people. How are you doing today? It's been a while. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, just excuse what I looked like. I've just got out the shower and I'm still flushed in the face from gym. Yep, still doing the gym thing. How's it working out for me? I'm not too sure. The scale has been rude. <laughs> So anyway, I haven't, sorry, I, my eye. I haven't been making a video in a while because I've actually just been so busy making stuff. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you what I've been making. Guys, just excuse the state of my office. Just look at this. Look at this horror show. Every time I clean it out, I go through these episodes where I'm crafting and digging and everything and everything lays out. It is so bad. I need to seriously do like a before and after okay so anyway um this is what i've been working on and why i haven't been posting look at my rocks guys i'm obsessed with this i actually got this is a rock that i painted and then drew on and then did dot art which was actually inspired by these spoons i've been making and painting and then oh cook sisters there falls open thing sorry sorry and then I've been painting some cats. These are all the paintings I've done. I'm going to get them scanned. And I've been dotting bottles. These took me forever to do. I've only finally finished them now and posted them. Even though I started them weeks ago. And then these are my rocks. Protea. Yeah. So I've been doing this. This. This table. Just this little bit of stuff. Just from there. Right across. To, yeah, it's taken me two weeks. Two weeks of non-stop working. And I get back from gym, shower, clean the house, and I'm by my desk by half past seven in the morning. And this is all I've produced. This is it. So this is what's been keeping me busy. But I love them all. I just wish I could keep everything and just have my house as a museum. And then I've also got some other rocks here that I'm busy with for markets. Take you on a little adventure. Excuse the floors, the dogs. Excuse the towel. Oh, the house is a mess. So these ones I'm busy with now. Never quit. Wish, faith. Some of these I love you. I honestly love you. And some odd looking um, lady birds. Ladybugs. This is a love bug, you see, because of the hearts. And then a bee. And then... Where's my, this little one's so cute. Because I had her eyes too far up, so I gave her some flowers and nostrils because she's smelling the flowers. Because sometimes you just got to stop. Stop and smell the flowers. So, working on these ones. I'm still not too sure where I'm going with it. And then these bad boys I am getting into today. Look at the size of this guy. Huge. I'm so excited to get started on those. But this is why I want to make the video. Okay, guys, I've got you in my normal spot. Sorry, I need to make like a back background or something and record in my office. I need to do that. I mean, I need to do that. So that I've got nice, pretty ambience for my videos because this isn't very um, aesthetically pleasing, if I do say so myself. But anyway, the I'm sorry if the energy of this video is low. I'm actually mentally and emotionally exhausted at the moment. Besides the fact that March is always a very emotional month for me because it's the month I lost my mom in. Her anniversary is coming up now on Saturday. Um, just with everything happening, um, I'm just feeling really tired, really tired. And the reason why I wanted to make this video, um, and I'm, I don't want this video to come across as condescending or ungrateful or, you know, whatever people would, you know, make up in their minds about what I've got to say. But I just need to say it. Um, because don't get me wrong, I love my customers. And I've got a small group of very loyal customers that have been with me almost since the beginning and without fail have supported me, whether it's big purchases or small purchases that just constantly keep me going and keep my dream alive of doing what it is that I do. However, there is some people that just don't understand what goes into making art. And people just see it as, a, oh, it's a hobby, it's a craft, it's a, um, you know, it's something that they can, you know, it's just anybody can do it. And anybody can do it, but it takes time, it takes money, and, it, and it's, an, it's an investment. And it's not just a financial investment, it's an emotional investment. I mean, 
I have to constantly think about new things to make that I haven't made before. I've, you know, one person will say they want this and the next person will want that. And I take these ideas and I like to incorporate it, but then you don't get returned because people don't want to buy it because they, they're struggling and I'm struggling, everyone's struggling. Um, but the point of this video, and especially because I'm making the rocks, and especially because there's a market coming up on Saturday on my mom's anniversary, which I hope I'm going to be emotionally stable for, um, is because a few markets ago, and it's not happened once and not happened twice, it's happened a couple of times, where <laughs> kids like my stuff because it's colorful, it's bright, and I've got, you know, the little little creatures and little eyes it's very inviting so the little people like it so one day story time um at a market and this girl picks up a rock and she's holding it okay so i've got a rock man she's holding it and she she just like the mom's looking around and this girl is so fixed up fixated on this rock so the mother comes to her, and you know people guys i listen to everything it's like my ears flap in the wind if you feel a breeze that's me listening so the mom comes and she says, how much is it? So the daughter turns the rock over and there's a price for 40 rand, okay? So she says, no man, put that down. Um, we can, we, I can make that. And fair enough, you can. Anybody can go and pick up a rock um, or bottle or anything and they can, they can paint on it. I mean, flip. It's not rocket science, okay? But this is where my frustration comes in that that woman doesn't know and what other people don't know is that rock, if you're going to make that rock, okay, it's not going to cost you 40 Rand. Pay the 40 Rand and I'll tell you why. I wrote it down just so that I'm clear. If this rock, okay, stays strong, right? That's why I made these because I've been, I've been needing some freaking inspiration and some motivation. So you take this rock, okay, you're going to go paint it. So you don't have rocks like these. They're nice and smooth. They're not going to be in your yard. So you're going to have to go down to the beach to get these rocks. I am in Grahamstown and I'm like 140 k, so I might be wrong from the beach. So give or take with not even taking in the increase of fuel. To get to the beach, last time we put fuel in was 150 rand, which I, I cause guzzle fuel. Like eat it, like for breakfast, lunch and supper. It's like you start it and like, oh gosh, there goes 20 rand, you know, it's so stressful. So let's just say 150 to go to the beach. Okay, cool. So now you on the way to the beach, that's, that's lacquer. Okay, cool. Then you're going to take your time to go collect the rock. So you and your family or you by yourself has to go and walk up and down the beach carefully selecting a few rocks. I don't like to take a lot of rocks at time and I also like to, and if you do do this and you do want to go collect rocks and you do want to start painting on them, take a paper packet with you and just pick up some of the rubbish that is laying around because our beaches are so sad. So I like to do that. Um, Okay, so now you're going to go and you're going to painstakingly look for these things and then carry them back all the way to your vehicle. Cool, okay, so now you've got your rock in hand, okay? Then you're going to get home and you're going to wash your rocks and you're going to let them dry. If you, which I didn't actually write down yet, okay, you need to cover your rocks with the gesso because these things suck in paint like anything. They absorb it so quickly. So for this, I didn't put a... Um, a gesso on it which is like a white thick paste that you use as a base um, and this just to get this pigment because of the rock sucking in the color I promise you was five coats of paint okay five coats five coats of paint okay so now you've gone to the beach you've got home you've washed it now now you want to go get your paints okay so now this is three colors of five Three colors of paint the white the blue and the green now you're going to get in your car and you're going to go, go and purchase these rocks okay so that's more fuel money and if you're going to order it then it's courier okay so let's just say this is three colors of rocks it's 60 rand for your colors at 100 mils you know a, a little container it's 180 rand for your paints okay then you're going to get your paint marker which is this black okay it's a, a paint marker this is 95 rand okay cool and so that's not even your fuel there. So it's 180 plus 95 rand just for your materials, okay? Then you need a paintbrush and you need your dotting tools. And I'm going to say 150 rand. Cool. Now, now it's not just, okay, I've got a rock, I've got all my materials, I've taken the time, I've spent the fuel, I'm now going to paint it. It comes down to trial and error because you're not going to just pick up a rock and paint something that you've seen at a market or seen on Pinterest or at a shop okay you have got to go through this whole thing called trial and error 
So you're going to be painting on these rocks, you're going to be making mistakes, okay, until you get what you want. That time and error costs money because of the materials you're using. So the more you're practicing, the more you're failing, the more you're buggering things up, the more you're going through it, the less your materials are becoming, which eventually you'll have to replace before you've actually mastered what it is that you want to achieve on your rock. Cool. Then you're happy with your rock, you've spent a whole week doing it, okay, and now you've got to seal it so that it keeps its color and that you can put it outside and it's outdoor friendly. And I pay 160 Rand for, I'll show you the size of it, 160 Rand for one of these. Okay, I can go through this in no time because my rocks take three coats, three coats. And this is a matte, so you see it's not too shiny. I love the matte. Anyway, so... Once you've done all of that, okay, and this is excluding your time and your, your labor, okay, it's 840 Rand. That is also excluding your travel time, excluding your travel on your fuel to go get your paint and go get your tools and stuff and everything it is. So, and excluding any more replacements on this stuff because you know it's happened before where you buy a paintbrush and you buy a tool and you get all the way home and you start working you realize damn this is not the size i've had it for a couple of days i've used it can't exchange it i'm gonna go out now and go buy another tool another paintbrush that's another a cost so 840 rand okay versus a 40 rand you would have spent on your daughter that day to buy her this rock that she's been holding in her hand since the time you've walked in and loved so much. And guys, it just doesn't make sense to me because I'm selling it a 40 rand just to make back a little bit of money. And I think what people forget is just because someone is sitting at a craft market doesn't mean that the value of their goods is different than someone's artwork that's in a gallery you know all indiv uh, individual artists in all shapes and forms all have to live they all have got expenses when when fuel goes up it goes up for us when our electricity runs out we've got to buy more we we eat and breathe and, s and do the same as you there is this misconception that artists have just got this wonderful luxury of being at home and it's free this and you know oh we can just make our art and make one piece and be set for the month with a little bit of spare change and it's it's this and it's that it's it's nothing like that the the bump and the grind for me is so intense because i am not charging a, a realistic valued amount on my items i am not getting back because there's just no money as well at the end of the day people are just holding on to their spare change which i get because art which i have seen is is more of a want than a need you need toilet paper you need toothpaste you need electricity this is just to make your house pretty or to make you feel good or to give as a gift and i get i get the things have shifted a lot but we are just getting by as artists and we are constantly having to justify um why our things are priced the way it is but little do you guys know we are scraping by by the hair on our front teeth okay and if if everything wasn't so corrupted in the world and things weren't so crazy just to live i could be one of those artists that made a piece and could live very comfortably knowing that i've made 30 rocks and i can now afford to live and put my child through school and feed my dogs and see to this and see to that yeah, so I think we all need to just think a little when we go and see these artists, you know, making stuff. And if you if you think something is expensive or you don't like it or want to change something, keep I think you know, maybe try to keep that to yourself. There is nothing more disheartening and demotivating that you've spent all this time and energy and money and late nights early mornings crying because you stressed everything to make said rock and someone picks it up and they say oh you know if they did this or did that and oh it's too expensive or oh, i don't like that color or why did they do that you sit back and you think am i not that good 
could I not have done better and you're listening and you're taking all of it in and then you apply it to the next thing and then someone else will say something and then you apply that and then you're really in your mind like in a tornado and there's no way that you can get out of it that those little comments just put you in an extra spin I'm I'm exhausted I've been seeing a lot of it on TikTok as well where artists are showcasing their work and it's beautiful it's breathtaking and then I'm like wow you know if only I could do something like that that is so stunning and you read the comments about how expensive it is and these artists are trying to justify um, their, their price tag and what blows my mind is that someone can walk some people can walk into Woolworths okay and they can go buy a scarf for 250 Rand without even blinking okay and they can go to a market that afternoon or a shop that afternoon where someone's made a handmade scarf and they will look at it for 150 and they'll be like it's too expensive because they think handmade means cheap handmade doesn't mean cheap handmade should actually just in its own be noted as this is this is this is someone's livelihood going into it their time and everything um i don't i do i, I don't i don't understand and i i don't understand that we can we can break other people down on their work and you can go spend three times the amount at something else and it's manufactured in a factory i don't know guys i just don't understand you know um a woman that i know she is an artist herself she told me the story once now i don't know the artist i can't remember this many many years ago when she told me this story and there was an artist well back in the day like a da vinci or whoever sitting in this park and he's busy sketching out this landscape my eyes twitching busy sketching out this whole scenery that he's working with and this man and woman walk past and they stop and they say oh you're an artist you know and he said yes and they said well would you mind actually drawing us so he sits and he quickly sketches them out and took about five minutes let's just say five minutes and he said how much it is and he, he wanted to hand it over and they said oh but that's so expensive um, you spent five minutes drawing us, you know, how can you charge us that? And he stopped and he said, he stopped them and he said, it hasn't taken me five minutes, it's taken me my whole life. And that stuck with me because even if this rock took me five minutes to make, it's taken me years to figure out what's the right paint, what's the right sealant, What's the right method? What's, what's the right of anything, you know? And we, people need, to, as artists, we need to remind ourselves of that fact. And people out there, you know, buying handmade stuff need to also remember that, you know? I'm not, we're not five minute crafts, people. Artists are not five minute crafts that you see on <laughs> these social media thingies. But yeah, like, I've been I've been in such a bad place and I make my stuff and it makes me feel so happy. It makes me so happy to make something that can bring joy to people. But it's so hard to to do it because it's just not getting the recognition or I'm just not getting the money in that I need to to continue on doing my work and it's so disheartening spending all this time and money and effort and people walk by and they don't want to buy it because of my personal history, yeah, we are the town I'm in because of my ex. I was told the other day that there are still people in this town that are boycotting my business because of what I did. Each every person has a past, and, and I mean, I'm still being judged for it, and I live with the guilt for what I've done. I've been that's not the point anyway, which what I want to make, but it's just, yeah. It just breaks my heart that I love what I do and I spend so much time doing it and 
people are just battening that they can't receive my work and I think a lot of people that make you know stuff for a living to sell I mean this is my only source of income and I absolutely love what I do I love making something and while I'm making something being inspired by making something else and in that moment just being so proud of what I've done and thinking about it. and I'm I don't want to cry but I always think about like how proud my mom would be of me because she was an artist of her, uh, herself she was an amazing artist that used to do commission pieces and just stop probably for the same reasons that that I'm feeling now um, but I wanna like I want my art to make people happy and look at it and and there are those customers and there are those people that pick it up and they're like, this is so beautiful. This is just so cute. And it makes me feel so good um, to have those moments. But I haven't had them for so long that you know, my heart's just very sad. And I think that I'm going to be doing a lot more videos about my work and the struggles I'm going through as an artist. And I mean, guys, it's even taken me a long time to call myself an artist. I always thought that an artist was something that you had to, you had to study for. I, it took a long time for me to label myself as an artist, call myself an artist. And you know, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, I make things, I make pretty things. And it wasn't up until a point where another photographer slash artist saw my work and she said when I saw your work the first thing I thought was this is this will this girl's an artist you know let me have a look more of her stuff and I was so grateful for for that comment because it made me feel like I had I had the right to that title I'm a self-taught artist I might not have put the money into university but I have sure as I'll put the time and money into into perfecting my imperfected and imperfect um, pieces so I hope that this video gives some people some food for thought I hope that the artists out there watching this um, don't lose hope don't lose your inspiration stay strong I know that the world is upside down right now but eventually it will come right and we can we can make beautiful things to bring happiness into the world and just have the return you know ah oh, there's so many things I would love to do and I feel like I'm completely restricted to what I'm using and what I'm making because of the financial depression that is happening in this world it is so crazy you know like the fuel's going up food's going up I made a TikTok the other day moaning and I was joking and stuff about the the fuel going up and everything and someone commented that freaking cooking oil is 96 rand it's like I don't know what's happening guys I've just you know I love what I do and I really do give everything into each piece I don't just do a slap jab slap dash slap dash job just to get something to make something it is meticulous planning and preparation and <sighs> yeah so be kind to the artists out there we humans too going through the same struggles that what you guys are going through just a little bit different and sometimes we just need a little bit more kindness <laughs> so if you if you even if you can't afford to buy something Keep your negative comments please to yourself and if you do like something tell that person that's made that that this is beautiful it will mean so much to them um, because they are probably also trying to just get by and even if they never got a sale to at least for them to know that their stuff is good that they don't have to get home that day and really question everything about themselves because we do that we're so programmed to to hold on to the negative and 
when we self-reflect it, we, or like, what can we do better? Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe I should stop what I'm doing. And it's a terrible thing to go through. And the mind is extremely powerful. So on that note, I do want to end off on a positive note. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. And be kind to everyone. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.